Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Shh, hold it down. So what did the doctor say? Gone, just like that, huh? All right, yeah, I'll break the news to the office. Uh, yeah, go ahead, send him flowers, something cheap. I never really liked the guy. A little respect for the dead, Burke. Nothing died except our softball team's shot at the trophy. Our intern, Brian, broke his arm or his leg or something. You know what he broke? He broke my heart because he's not playing now. First baseman, he was your best player. You've got, like, no team without him. What are you gonna do? Lose, badly and often. Joe, didn't you play first base in college? No, I did not. You told me you were MVP two years in a row. Three. <laughs> Damn. Joe, how'd you like to play on our one game from the finals office softball team? I can't. I don't work in your office. It's the government. No one checks, no one balances, no one cares. There's no way I'm playing for the uh, Bad News Burks. Oh, please, I would never come up with a name that lame. We're called Mel's Angels. Is there swag? Like what? I don't know. Watch, mountain bike, spa gift bag. You'd get a profound sense of satisfaction. I was born with that. Joe. Forget it, all right? There's no way you're talking me into this. And Mel's Angels is one win away from the trophy. Thanks to the mighty bat of my first baseman, Joe Longball Longo. Not to mention the amazing unassisted double play by the second baseman in the seventh inning. Yeah. Uh, did you enjoy my unassisted double play dance? I'm a little hazy on it. How did they go again? Like this. Oh, like, like, okay. Mm -hmm. little okay. Little more hip, Joe. Little hip, Joe. Longo. So gross when they get along. Don't look at it. <laughs> now, aren't you glad I talked you into joining the team? Well, wait a minute. Back up. You didn't talk me into it. You told me the pluses and minuses. I made my own decision. Yeah, after I talked you into it. <laughs> You're unbelievable. Everything's got to be your way. Well, I like things the correct way, which just happens to be my way. Oh. Yay, they're back. <laughs> I guess you're stuck with me. All right, guys, we've got a lot at stake here. You know, the people of District 7 elected us for a reason, to win the Softball League trophy. <laughs> I know we've got budget gaps and libraries closing, but this is something we can actually succeed at. You know, we were this close to winning last year when it was snatched out from under us by the councilman who shall not be named. Hancock. Herbert Hancock. Councilwoman Burke. Herbert, always a pleasure to see you. Talk up and down the halls is all about your big win and your new superstar. Which one of these fine athletic specimens is Longball Longo? <laughs> He's not here. How convenient. People leave their offices all the time. I mean, if I went to your office right now, you'd be out. That's how it is with Joe, too. I see. What exactly does this Joe Longo do? He's Mel's nan. Manager. Manager. He's, he's my office manager. So if I come back later today or tomorrow, I'll see him. Uh, I've seen him many, many times working here, doing his job, managing things. <clears throat> I look forward to seeing him. <laughs> Joe doesn't work here. Or does he? Oh, I'll get that. Councilwoman Burke's office. I'm answering the next one. Hey, how's everything going here? Good, good, good. You know, a little bored out of my mind. <laughs> Do me a favor, would you punch me in the face? I want to feel something. Oh, come on, in two hours, we're having cake for Lisa and parking enforcement. Cake? Okay, you just had cake. Yeah, that was for Nathan and animal control, and it was before lunch. No, this one's totally different. It's gonna be yellow. You know what, I'm gonna go home. No, 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 no. Come on, we'll find something for you to do. Um, okay, you know what? You were really good at reorganizing my closet at home. We have a really messy closet here, too. Nah, I don't wanna organize any. What kind of closet is it? A huge supply closet. Come on, it's a disaster. No one can find anything in there. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to take a look. Go team. <laughs> Well, that's odd. She didn't say she loved my short story. You gave it to her, right? Well, of course, but not yet. You see, as editor of the literary blog, she's really busy and impossible to track down. Maybe the girl who just went in the kitchen knows where you can find her. It'd be a shame if my story didn't get posted and things got weird between us. Really? That could happen? That could happen. <laughs> Be right back. <laughs> Thanks, squeaky mouse. <laughs> hey, I meant to give you this. It has Holly's short story for exclusive publication in the Grant Rant. She could have taken it anywhere, but she came to you first. Seriously? 
You think I'm gonna publish her story just because you two are going out? But it's really good. <laughs> oh, so you've read it. I'm afraid to. Because I may not like it and I think she can read my thoughts. You are truly sad. But sad with a girlfriend. Who wants a frosted piece of heaven? Burke, disaster averted. <laughs> Look what I found. Typewriter ribbon. Yeah, I'm gonna donate this to the um, museum of crap that no one uses anymore. Cake, Joe? I saved you half my flower. Thank you, Stephanie. So this is the yellow cake I've heard so much about. Joe, this is very important for office morale. Yeah, because nothing brings an office together like um, fat and cholesterol. <laughs> Ding dong, I smell cake. Councilman Hancock, I'd like you to meet Joe Longo. Surprised to see you here, Longo. Why would you be surprised? He works here, don't you? Yes, I do. And you're the office manager, right? That's what they tell me. <laughs> you must know your way around. Tell me this, if I wanted to walk down the hall to the men's room, which way would I turn? To the right. And uh, down the stairs. Oh, and stall number three is out of order. Do not go in there. You win this round, Longo. But I'll be back. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. You never know when I might show up. Oh, that went great. Great, what are you talking about? He said he could come back at any time. Oh, don't worry, he only comes back when there's cake. You, you have cake twice a day. Uh, I guess you're just gonna have to stay here the whole week. Uh, doing what exactly? I was just in the supply closet looking for a blue highlighter, and there it was, on a shelf, with a label. How did that happen? Just a little angel named Joe. Look, I didn't do it for the praise. I just did what anyone else would have done in there. Way to go, long ball. Yeah. <laughs> so what's for dinner? Breakfast. <laughs> so you read Holly's short story and you loved it and you're gonna publish it, right? Please say yes. The story's missing some things. Like what? Um, a beginning, middle, an end. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I run a literary blog and we have standards. Come on, I'm already on boyfriend probation. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's silly for me to be sitting there all week long with nothing important to do. Oh, but you did a hell of a job in the supply closet. Well, that was a closet. I'll be, you know, a very challenging closet, but still. <laughs> I need something worthy of my skills. What's that? Well, next my dinner. It's pretty good. Oh, give me three minutes off something hot on the table. Hey, Mel, would you please read Holly's story and tell Lennox how good it is? Oh, no, no, I'm not getting in the middle of that. That little pit bull scares the hell out of me. <laughs> Wait, not in a bad way. She's sweet. I love her. I'll save you the trouble. The story's not good. You never do anything for me. I made you dinner. <laughs> All right. I'd be willing to sit down with Holly and work through the story to see if we can't make it barely passable. That's all I'm asking. I'm sure she'd be open to that. Oh, hey, Joe, before I forget, uh, everybody's got to be in tomorrow at 8 for a sexual harassment seminar. Oh, the guy who does it has the cutest butt. You just want to grab it. You're really putting a lot of emphasis on winning this stupid little trophy, you know that? It's a big trophy, okay? It's bigger than Stephanie. You do realize I'm not actually your office manager, though, right? But you could be. As of tomorrow, I am releasing all of your longoness. You are completely in charge. I'm going to be office manager? The whole week. So I do have some ideas about increasing efficiency around there. Don't listen to you, all efficiency. <laughs> Joe Longo, executive ninja. Ooh. I like that. Holly, you don't need all this background information. You could just start the story on page three. The story starts on page one. That's why it's called page one. <laughs> How about we compromise and start on page two? No. Why are you giving me all these comments? Ryder told me you just wanted to get together to tell me how great my story is. What? Well, sure. But if there's some tiny thing that could be improved, we could make what is great even greater. Like what happened in my life when you got added to it. You know what, Ryder? I just don't feel like I have a partner in this relationship anymore. Are you breaking up with me? 
I think it's kind of mutual. No, 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 don't. Please. This is what's best for all of us. Except for you. No, but your story was great, and I loved all your unnecessary background crap. I mean, gems. <laughs> Lennox, what'd you do? What did I do? You told me she'd be open to my feedback. You lied to both of us. Well, sure. What choice did I have? Why do you even put up with Holly? Because I really like her. Oh, seven hours in the police department conference room. Bad lighting, anyone? Oh, not one of those cops hit on me, probably because of the bad lighting. <laughs> How's everything here? Shouldn't be going better, but it's gonna be. I came up with a, a reward system to increase constituent call volume. As long as you didn't hurt your throwing arm. What? No, that's fine. Uh, Hancock stopped by, though, just to say hi. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I gotta go. I gotta show the IT guys how that new software works. I'll be right back. Oh, Rajiv, Ajay, let's make this happen, guys. Come on. Did you see that? My amazing first baseman slash office manager is actually happy to be here. He's the only one. Look. A memo to all staff from Joe Longo, office manager. How did he get his own letterhead? Just read. <laughs> to boost efficiencies and eliminate distractions, all office personnel are hereby barred from using Facebook. What? I know. I wanted to post how upset I was, but I couldn't. <laughs> Furthermore, in order to eliminate redundancies and birthday celebrations, office birthdays will be accrued and celebrated quarterly. Today is my birthday. <laughs> of course it is, birthday girl. That's why I got you a surprise. <laughs> well, never mind, because I've been accrued. We'll be celebrating it in two months with a cake that says, happy birthday, alls, y'all. <laughs> Don't worry, you are gonna have your cake, little missy. New speech, Chamber of Commerce, Wednesday. Hey, Wyatt, wait, how's your mom doing? Is she off that heart lung machine? I wouldn't know. Personal calls have been banned. Really? Yeah. I gotta get back before Warden Longo notices I'm away from my post. Wyatt, why do I see an empty desk out here? Gotta go. Are you gonna talk to Joe or are you gonna weasel out because he's the ticket to your precious softball trophy? Don't worry, I'll talk to him. Hey, I just got out of the break room. Um, do we really need 17 different kinds of herbal tea in there? So, Joe, a lot of changes in the last couple hours. Yeah, it's really humming out there, huh? You don't have to thank me, though. It just feels good to get my office mojo back. Yeah, I can see that. Um, can we go big picture here for a minute, though? Absolutely. Yeah, I am all yours for 60 seconds. Go. Okay, well, um, you know, it's a team effort here, and the captain of that team is obviously... Me, the office manager. <laughs> One more guess? What? You? No, not you. You're the team owner. We're all doing this for you. We're busting our butts to make money. Lots of money. Or, you know, whatever it is that you guys do here in this office. It's the government. It's not for profit, it's for service. So when you send out memos without my approval on stationery, I don't know how you got, it's, well, no, no, let me just put it this way. Um, it doesn't piss me on. Mel, you told me I could make this office more efficient. You told me to unleash my executive ninja. Now you want me to just handcuff my ninja? My ninja's not gonna be handcuffed. I mean, if I'm gonna handcuff my ninja, I might as well just go home. No, 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 we need you. No, you need me to play on the softball team. No, 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 we need you for our team here. You know, not that just the softball team. Everybody here loves you. I mean, trust me, I would tell you if they didn't. I don't keep things from you. Happy Make a wish, Stephanie. There's not enough room. Blow out the candles before the sprinkler system goes off. <laughs> Holly texted me. She's on her way over. <clears throat> That's a good sign, don't you think? Good sign of the apocalypse. <laughs> I'm sure she's just rethinking the breakup and wants to talk it over. <clears throat> or kill you. <laughs> Do you want me to stay and help you handle this or provide first aid? No, no, it's fine. Holly, won't you come in and be my girlfriend? Ryder, we are estranged. So I thought it best if I took back certain mementos of our time together. We'll start with that shirt. But you gave me this shirt. I, I love this shirt. And that's why we're starting with it. Take it off. I hope you have a t-shirt on underneath because I don't want to see your bony sternum. Look, I just want you to know that Lennox isn't saying she won't publish your story. She just wants to work with you to make it better. 
I hate to admit it, but my sister really does know a lot about this writing stuff. Maybe you should listen to her. Sure. I'm just glad she forgot she gave me these pants. Burke, you got a minute? What? Okay, well, I rearranged the office schedule so we could uh, fit in a few more batting practices before Saturday's game. Uh, okay. And I know you wanted to put off finding a new intern, but uh, why wait, you know? So um, I scheduled 14 candidates for you to meet, all right? We're gonna have to cancel your lunch, but that's how it goes. You did what? Can we just talk about this later? Sure, yeah, I'm actually gonna head in the office early. I gotta show Hannah how to make a proper pot of coffee. I'll see you there. Only three more days of Joe. Trophy, 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 trophy! All right, everybody, let's rock and roll. I gotta get to work. I gotta get to work. I love saying that. I just love saying that. Hey, I wanted to tell you, I've decided to publish Holly's story the way she wrote it. Don't mess with me, Lennox, because I'm kind of fragile right now. No, I'm going to post it, as is. Well, why'd you change your mind? Well, you know, I respect her artistic vision. It's not the way I would have done it, but there's a place for what she's written. You feel sorry for me. So much. <laughs> well, thank you, but, you know, Holly really does have a lot of special qualities. Keep telling yourself that. How I get to the day. Wow, we made it. Yeah, I can't believe we got to the championship game. Actually, I was thinking we made it through a week with Joe Longo. I don't know if I'm ever gonna see him the same way again. I was wrong. When did he get here? Oh, he's been here for hours. He wanted to scout the opponents, watch them at batting practice. He even sent them a muffin basket so they'd be sleepy by the third inning. Councilwoman Burke. Hancock? You can touch it if you like. Close as you're gonna guess. Wow, that is gonna look so good on my desk. May the best team win. Oh, thank you, we will. All right, Chuck, here's our lineup card. I already got your lineup card from uh, Long Ball over there. What? But I do the lineup cards. Well, then what's this? All right, let's play some ball. Scotty, throw some donuts on this bat, take some warm-up swings. Hey, Joe, uh, listen, just a little thing. Um, you know, the team captain is the one who does the lineup cards. Oh, Mel, let's not get all caught up on titles and labels, you know? I mean, I am the office manager, but, um, we need to do what's best for the team. Oh, really? Then why is Ornstein hitting six? He's a contact hitter, should be batting second. And this isn't about me, but I always lead off, always. And that's not just to get the game opening applause and the air and horn ovation. I put you third because the best hitters always hit third and fourth. Trust me, this is the most efficient lineup for the team. That's right. You know, the most efficient way to do everything, just like at the office. I don't see anybody else at the office complaining about it. Oh, that's because we were all hiding in the closet having birthday cake. You were... What? Nothing. You know, <clears throat> never mind. Let's just, uh, let's just focus on this game. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. You blatantly ignored my office memo that we were accruing all office birthdays? That's right. Yeah. We all hid from you. We had a birthday cake in the supply closet, a great big giant birthday cake, and it tasted even better because you weren't there. Hey, I am the office manager no, no, here, Bert. No, 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 no. You're the fake office manager, okay? You're like the blow-up doll that you put in the passenger seat so you can get on the carpool lane. You're only here to win this baseball game for us. Let me finish. Okay, I'm done. Well, 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 long goes the ringer. I am shocked. Shocked. Mr. Umpire, I don't know what to say. I do. Game over. Mel's Angels are disqualified. Oh, wait, no, wait, what? You can't do that. That's not fair. The guy doesn't work at your office. But, well, but, but, but I, but I really wanted to win. I mean, I even made a space on my desk for the trophy. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. I, I don't know what to say. No, look, I don't want to ruin this for you and for the whole team, so hold on a minute. Um, there's been a big mistake here, okay? This team deserves to play in this game. I'll tell you what, I will take my uniform off for you right now. Too late. At least let him take off the uniform. <laughs> what could it hurt? Listen, Burke, you and I have had our differences, but today I think I can safely say, <laughs> loser! <laughs> oh, 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 Trophy wants to talk to you. <laughs> bye bye, Mel. See you. Never! <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Trophy. 
Well, there goes a real class act. I don't know what to say, Mel. Better look next year. Yeah, I know. Just, you know, I stayed up late last night choreographing my league championship victory dance. I'm sure everybody still wants to see that. No. 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 All right, no? OK. Well, then I'll just see y'all back at the office on Monday. Woo! Can we see you, Max? <laughs> All right. Five, six, seven, eight. I forgot to tell you, uh, last night all the guys and I went out drinking after the game that we almost played. And why it got a little chatty? Exactly how many birthday parties did you have in that supply closet? Okay, they weren't parties. How many? One. Six. And Teresa's baby shower, although that was not easy. She is huge. <laughs> there you go, squeaky mouse. <laughs> so glad my shirt is back. And? And you, scary bear. Are you going to ask her? Absolutely. Hey, Mel, Holly's looking for a summer internship with a council purse that she was one. Oh, I gotta go! <laughs> I know. Listen, Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Aw, oh, Ryder, you're crying. And you said you didn't like Sundra Bullock. No, no, I'm not crying. It's a drip from the ceiling. Honey, it's all right for a young man to express his emotions in front of his aunt. You know what? Sit here, in the sad seat. <laughs> I don't know what that's gonna prove. Hey, holy crap! The ceiling's dripping. Where is that coming from? That leak. Just a guess. You guys want me to Google a plumber? No, 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 no. If I call a plumber, Joe's gonna get bent out of shape. You know, Burke is just a little drip. What, are you gonna call some slob with a truck and a hairy crack? <laughs> Burke, let me do it. Save you money, but a job, no crack. Everybody's happy. <laughs> Not bad, Len. But, you know, you, you gotta be more smug. I'll work on that. Hey. Joe, hey, hey, uh, remember that little leak behind the tub that you said was nothing? Well, now it's something. Can we call a guy? Well, call a guy. You got a guy right here, all right? I'll save you money. I'll do the job. Look great doing it. Everybody's happy. I can never be that smug. So I guess you're wondering why I'm all uh, dressed up? Hmm, could you sense our interest by the way we didn't ask? And I'm sure you're intrigued as to all the secret phone calls I've been getting lately and why I've been acting so mysterious. Yeah, uh, we thought it was just another one of those women you're ashamed of. <laughs> No, I actually just came from a meeting with uh, Judge Reuben Biddle. He's the guy who's overseeing the uh, bankruptcy and the general wreckage of Scanlon Financial. Joe, if I close my eyes during this story, trust me, I'm still listening. Well, now it can be revealed. Some of the lost money has been found in overseas accounts. Fifty million dollars worth. Is that what's in the briefcase? <laughs> yeah. It's all right here, buddy. <laughs> in quarters. No. <laughs> Look, the point is that legitimate stockholders of Scanlon Financial are entitled to a percentage of the proceeds. How much? Well, after taxes, it's really just a percentage of a percentage. So. How, How much? $167,000. Wow, that's huge. Now you can date less shameful girls. Life-changing money. Yeah. Hey, that's great news, you know? Nothing bad about that. Yay! It's all good.
Here you go, America. Joseph P. Longo's famous four-layer lasagna. Extra crispy on the edges, as always. I'm gonna miss this lasagna. Miss it? It's right here in front of you. <laughs> you know, for how long, Joe? How long? <laughs> Until you eat it. Ryder, just because Joe's getting this incredible amount of money doesn't mean things are necessarily gonna change around here, right, Joe? Yeah, why would anything be different? I can think of 167,000 reasons why. <laughs> All right, you guys, come on. Let's not get ahead of ourselves and imagine wild scenarios based on nothing. We'll never see Joe again. Really? How can you be sure? Because he's gonna quit. I mean, that's what I'd do. I wouldn't want to work for me. Would you want to work for me? Um, yes. I wouldn't stop working for you no matter how much you paid me. Go ahead, give me a raise. See if I quit. I knew this day would come, and here it is, the day. He'll be gone in a month, I know it. You know, Joe, no, always... No, 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 no more Joe talk. All right, this is a Joe-free zone. From now on, city business only. Fine, the mayor's office called to find out if you I know Joe is hard to handle, but that's part of his semi-charm, you know? I, we, the whole house has really become, you know, semi-fond of him. Well, of course, because aren't houses deep inside just women with feelings and needs and doors? <laughs> My point is, how am I gonna find somebody like Joe? I mean, well, somebody who's that good with the kids. That's, that's my main concern. Uh-huh. So, if he's not working for you or living with you, do you think he might ask you out? What? Where do you get these ideas? No. No. I mean, no. I, look, I, he's not even here and he's getting on my nerves. This is just like Joe. Okay, shifting back to what the people pay us for. The mayor's gala is in a month and the invitation is for Mel Burke plus one and security needs to know as soon as possible. Who's your plus one? A month from now? Hey there, Joe. Hey, Mel, um, we need to talk. Talk? Yeah, about the living situation. You know, it's been sort of going on since I moved in underneath the surface. There's no real easy way to say this, um, but uh, the showers you're taking are way too long. <laughs> Showers? Yeah, it's an old house with old pipes, you know, really can't handle that kind of use. Short showers, right. I went to camp. I got it. All right, so uh, plumbing problem solved. Good, good. Now let's talk about you and me. You and me? Like, like, like me and you? Yeah. You, you, you know, about me receiving all this money and how you're gonna get along without me. Yeah, well, I think I'll manage somehow. Okay, well, good. I just wanna let you know, I wanna help you um, find my replacement. Shouldn't take longer than like two weeks. Oh, so, wait, you'll be gone in two weeks? That's pretty fast. Well, you know, if I'm not working here, I don't want to be taking up your basement. <laughs> as awesome as it is. <laughs> well, besides, I talked to a buddy of mine. He says um, there's an open apartment in his building. Oh, well, then you should uh, take a look at it. Yeah, you're right. I probably should. I did. Oh, you did already. Well, um, that's great. So, how was it? It's nice. You know, above ground. <laughs> you know how cool it is to be able to look out your window and not see ankles? Because <laughs> I'd forgotten. That sounds like you made a decision. Well, you know, things are changing. No reason to drag it out, right? I guess not. Listen, um, I was wondering, you know, there's this mayor's annual gala next month, and I have to bring a date, and, you know, it'd be awkward to go with my nanny, but in a month, you'll be my, well, you'll be my nothing. <laughs> or you could be my plus one. Whoa. It's been a long time since I've said that. <laughs> No, but seriously. Whoa! <laughs> you know what? Forget it. Uh, I'll just find another plus one. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, no, let's, uh, do it. I mean, you know, because I actually have been thinking about going out to the mayor's gala, you know, because they had it last year. It is annual. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, well, good then. So, plumbing, moving, we covered it all. It's all good. Excellent. All right, well, now I'm going to take my clothes off. <laughs> and change, like I do every day. <laughs> Plus one. All right, smile for me. There we go. So I'm taking pictures of all the nanny candidates, you know, and then the finalists be put through a little, um, you know, database law enforcement background check. <laughs> Make sure you don't have any overdue library books or, um, you know, kill the guy. <laughs> Got it. Well, I hope you have an open mind. Because a guy can do a nanny job just as good as a woman can. I know, man. You'd be replacing me. 
Then you know how tough it is for people like us. No, no, I'm not anything like you. As a matter of fact, I just fell into this gig. I was uh, actually a big power broker at a huge financial firm. Had a corner office, secretary, the whole thing. So my life blew up. <laughs> this was the only job I could get. So, you know, you take what you get and you try to make the best of it. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be interviewing you here, right? Do <laughs> you have any questions for me? Uh, yeah, if you're not the boss, who's the boss? Um, actually, uh, she is. <laughs> At least she thinks she is. I mean, you know, this is her house, but she's really just more of a figurehead. She's not really here that much either, so it involves more than just taking care of the kids. So what's she like to work for? Uh, you know, she's okay. I mean, because you're living here, you sort of get drawn into everything, you know, and she, she likes to share a lot, so, uh, you know, things get kind of involved. Huh. Been there. <laughs> Call some of my references. Very satisfied. <laughs> I had this one woman who kept me around six months after the kid left for college. That got pretty involved. Okay, you know what? You are, um, shockingly gross. <laughs> Tell you what, buddy, why don't you take your, uh, resume and your references and we'll find you a nice street corner, okay? See hey, who drives by, all right? could be run for both of us. Yeah, not in this house, pal. So, who was that? A pig with, uh, dimples. <laughs> I don't like any of the people in that pile. Well, there's not gonna be anybody like you. We've trained you. <laughs> You've trained me? Do you have any idea what you were like before? We put a lot of work into you. And all for nothing. Well, it's not like I'm just gonna disappear. Well, Aunt Mel said you found an apartment. I mean, why would you come back here once you move? Lots of reasons. You know, I gotta see Ryder's soccer games, and, um, you know, I gotta scare the putting out all the little nerds that come here to ask you out. <laughs> think I'd miss out on that kind of stuff? Well, what about Aunt Mel? Do you think you'll see her? Yeah, yeah, I mean, Sure, I hope to. You know, if not just to help her out with her taxes like I did last year. I mean, when I told her that she could write off her hair products as a business expense, the woman wept openly. I'm not talking about taxes. I'm asking if you'd ever... Oh, look at that. That should be Esther Tillis. And an excuse for you to avoid my question. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, here we are. Wow. Right Joe Longo's bachelor pad. I feel honored to be the first single woman to cross the threshold. Yeah, actually, um, you weren't. Oh? No, the broker yesterday was, in fact, um, single and interested. And on the plus side of 70. So you're gonna see her again? Yeah, I'm taking her out for dinner tomorrow night at 3.30. Does this building have any lights? Of course it's got lights. No electricity, apparently. <laughs> you should get some of that. Chicks dig it. <laughs> All right, I'll put it on the top of my list. What's in this box? Smells like Chinese food from that place near your office. Hey, Chinese food from that place near your office. Yeah, well, I knew you weren't going to be home to cook for me, so what choice did I have? I'm going to have to do it on the floor. <laughs> Eat dinner. Oh, uh, what? No, you don't. Where's your imagination? All right, table for two. Light him up, Longo. <laughs> nice catch. So as soon as I get the money, I'm gonna rent myself an office. Not a, not a big place, just something small, you know? So I can sort of spread my wings. I gotta get back in the game, Mel. Kind of a, you know, a, a, a new phase. Mm, a new phase. Kind of like it is for the two of us. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, with, with me, Living here. Yeah, and, you know, not working for me. Does sort of change things. <laughs> you sure this is Joe's apartment? Yeah, yeah, it's the right place. Hey, come on in, guys. <laughs> Why don't you turn on some lights? Because there's no electricity. Maybe you just need to flip a breaker. Ryder, if it was that easy, don't you think I already would have... <laughs> done that? Hey, uh, <clears throat> Ryder, looks like they were having a nice meal. You know, just the two of them. Let's go home. No, no, but we, we gotta tell Aunt Mel about a new couch. What new couch? The one we signed for. It's sitting in our living room. <gasps> My new couch! I forgot about this! Custom-made, cream-colored Italian suede. Oh, I ordered it a year ago, back when I was a glamorous single woman who didn't live with teenage stain makers. <laughs> that I love very much. <laughs> oh, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My new couch is not sitting underneath the leak, is it? 
Joe, didn't you fix the leak? Uh, yeah, I, I tried to. See, it keeps moving. Well, what if it moves over my new couch? That is $4,000 worth of Italian sway. All right, you know what? We might have to run a few red lights, but this is a fancy couch emergency. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. No, it's okay. We can just, you know, pick this up later. Okay, cool. bye. What the hell was that? What, I, I was just saying goodbye. I make a big deal. <laughs> I never thought I could feel this way. You know, I just, I love him so much. I just, I can't imagine the house without him. Aunt Mo, it's just a couch. <gasps> she doesn't mean that, couchy. Hey, Mel, um, I was slicing a bagel and I cut my finger. It's, it's bleeding. Whoa, 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 get the hell away from my couch. Do you have any band-aids? Yeah, and you're gonna need them all if you don't back the hell away. Come on. No fruit juice! Mr. Longo, there are a lot of papers here for you to sign before you receive your settlement. Oh, uh, this is Miss McKenna. She's here representing a number of other claimants to the Scanlon assets. Very nice to meet you. Possibly. Your award is actually a little more than we thought. I know that comes as a blow to you. <laughs> I'll find a way to bounce back, Your Honor. Oh, um, one thing before you take a bath in all your new money. On behalf of my clients, many of whom are living in their cars, I couldn't help but notice the oddness of your address. What's odd about it? It's the same address where Lennox and Ryder Scanlon live. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's actually a uh, funny coincidence. Coincidence? <laughs> yes, coincidence. When two unrelated things happen at the same time. You know, kind of like a nice guy being trapped in a room with a blood-sucking attorney. You live with the Scanlon heirs? Well, yes, but it's, uh, it's actually uh, very complicated. Complicated. So you just repeat words and make them sound evil? That is a troubling connection. Mm, I have to say I agree. <laughs> Shocker. It may appear to some that were Mr. Longo to receive any amount from the settlement, Louis Scanlon's heirs would benefit. But th there was nothing shady going on here, okay? This was a job. I was their nanny, okay? The kids needed somebody. I stepped in. I'm actually very proud of what I did. So there was a connection. Well, yes, there was a connection. There was an emotional connection. I mean, uh, I've been taking care of the kids for over a year now. They're sort of like they're my kids. Yeah, it just looks awfully messy. You know, a derivatives broker with an MBA takes a job as a nanny for children who just happen to be the offspring of the fugitive Louis Scanlon, who was your former boss. Judge, I object. <laughs> to her being such an unpleasant person. Mr. Longo, you might want to consult with an attorney before responding any further. Well, I, I don't even live there anymore, okay? I, I have a whole new address now. As of when? Yesterday. Yesterday. And she's doing it again. Thanks so much. I'm sure you're a great nanny. All right, we'll call you. Hate them all. They're horrible people, especially the big one with the mustache. Aw, she reminded me the most of Joe. Couldn't we get some young woman from, like, Sweden? I mean, I mean how much would that cost? I could kick in some of my college money. I'm hungry. What's for dinner? Oh, you're asking me? I don't want to go dig around in the freezer until you find something. Hey, do not touch my lasagna. That is a piece of history. Ugh, this must be Mrs. Campanetta. I hate her already. Hey. You rang the doorbell? It's polite. I don't live here anymore. And to that point, um, did you find somebody to uh, fill my position yet? Nope. No, there are still a few creepy strangers I haven't invited into my home yet. <laughs> Okay, so I just got to have a meeting with the uh, judge, and uh, it appears that my uh, settlement uh, is going to be a little less than I originally thought. How much less? Well, it's still going to be six figures. But they're all zeros. But that's your money. That's not fair. What, what happened? Apparently, they didn't like the fact that I lived here with uh, Lennox and Ryder. They thought that made us some sort of a family. Okay, so you lost the entire settlement because you lived here? Because I hired you? Yep. No one else was going to, though. So look, if uh, the job is still open. You mean you would 
Well, look, I, I have a ton of references, okay? And uh, a lot of experience. Dealing with you. Well, that's true. So if nobody's jumped on this yet, would you like me to go to the kitchen and make us some dinner? Oh, good Lord, yes. <laughs> okay. Hey, look at this. The cream-colored dream couch, huh? Yes, it is. Wow. It's a lot bigger than I thought. You sure it's not too big for this space? I love it. Okay, it's your house. Hey, Joe, now that you're back to being the nanny, you know, it, it, it might be kind of awkward for us to go to the... Oh, the, the annual mayor's gala thing. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. I mean, now that we're back to having a working relationship, it probably would be inappropriate. Hey, Red Bucket is out again. I promise you I'm going to fix that leak tomorrow, oh, okay? Oh, no need. I hired a plumbing contractor. Why? Why would you do that? He says it's extensive water damage. It could be in all the walls. Yeah, sure, yeah. The sky is falling. Extensive damage to your wallet. Come here, I'll show you this leak. It's like this big. It's a little crack right behind the tub. Come on. Oh. What was that noise? It sounded like cracking. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I have to say, you were absolutely right. I mean, from up here, the couch looks perfect. It's almost like it was made for the space. God, Joe, you're back. Yes, I am. What's up, guys? Couchy. Couchy. <laughs> you know what, Mel? Um, a little club soda that'll come right out. Are you out of your mind? My house is ruined. Hey, relax. I lost more than you did today. Well, uh, this is not a contest. And if it was, I win. Hey, uh, guys, the kitchen's still okay. You know, people gotta eat. Cool. Let's go make some food. Or, uh, you gonna come, Mel? Yeah, just, just a second. Okay. <laughs> We're good. Look, there's damage in all the walls. Everything's gotta come down. It already did. How long is it gonna take to get it back the way it was? Whoa, who says it has to be back the way it was? This is a chance to rethink the whole house. Oh, would you tell her how expensive that's gonna be, please? Look, I never get in the middle of a husband and wife argument. Oh. Whoa, uh, what, husband and wife? Yeah, give me a little credit. <laughs> how would your husband do? There'd be claw marks in that door for me trying to get the heck out of here. Could have fooled me. So, what kind of remodel are we talking? Okay, first, I hate the kitchen, okay? What? So, um, if we could rip that out. Whoa, wait a minute. You hate the kitchen? First of all, when was the last time you actually used the kitchen? I go in there all the time. Yeah, to get yourself a nice glass of red wine. Oh, oh, uh, a wine cellar in the basement. Well, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I live in the basement. But you always have to make everything about you. What? You know what? You're crazy. If you're not married, you've got to be engaged. No. Oh. Engaged? Are you... In Why would you think... To, 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 yeah. To, really? No, it's more like brother and be... sister over yeah, here. I don't know. You're engaged. You'd be like, oh, time out. <laughs> Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Wow, Joe, you were the pledge master of your college fraternity and captain of your rowing team? And the wrestling team, but really they're just titles, guys. You know, titles are meaningless unless you're the president. <laughs> Turn the page. <clears throat> wow, president of the student body. Look at that long wavy hair. <laughs> and that mustache. Very Ned Flanders. <laughs> yeah, we had a mustache growing contest. Clearly there were no winners. <laughs> This is me singing in that rock cappella group that I began. It's called the uh, Treblemakers. See, Joe, this is a much better way to relive your college years. Yeah, going to that reunion would have just been asking for treble. Who says I'm not going? Well, I mean, come on, you had a rough year, the scandal, the divorce, the bankruptcy. Yeah, I mean, the highlight of your year was getting a job as a nanny. 
thank you for all the sunshine, everybody. But I'm going, all right? I was Joe Longo then, and I'm Joe Longo now. My self-esteem does not depend on what a bunch of my former classmates think, all right? I am walking in there with my head held high. Oh, you found a hot date, didn't you? Burnt my tongue, yeah. Singed my eyebrows. <laughs> That's not the reason why I'm going. But it helps. Immeasurably. <laughs> it's all good. All good. It's okay. wants you to have drinks with Gustavo Carvalho. You know, the Brazilian artist who drapes buildings in tinfoil? What? The power of my art is its intentional randomness. It's big stuff wrapped in foil, dude. Get a life. <laughs> His installation in Chicago brought in 500,000 tourists. Like I said, the man's a genius. <laughs> well, the mayor wants me to wine and dine Gustavo. I'll just have to go and flirt and toss my hair. Ugh, I'm such a floozy for Toledo. <laughs> Don't you women understand that agreeing to a date is like a contract? You can't just cancel the date before the event because, you know, your mother suddenly needs platelets. Your date canceled? <laughs> How horrible. Whatever will you do? Come on, you can't find another flashy, large-breasted TV weather girl, or as I like to call them, cumulo bimbus. Donna is a meteorologist. Yeah, you're thinking with your barometer. Look, she's Ivy League educated, all right? She is smart, charming, funny, double-jointed everything you want when you go to a reunion, and now she's gone. Look, now you have a good excuse not to go. If I don't show up, he's right. He wins, and he gets the last laugh, okay? Uh, I hate when he has the last laugh. Who he? Kyle Cookler. We competed for everything in school, and I always won. And on the last day of school, he comes up to me, and he says, Joe Longo, one day I will be top dog, and that will be the worst day of your life. Well, how do you know he's on top? I mean, maybe he's a nanny somewhere. <laughs> not that that's a bad thing. Absolutely. Yeah, well, um, here's the latest issue of um, Not A Nanny magazine. Look at this, six-page spread, all right, on his amazing life, his Fifth Avenue penthouse. I mean, it focuses mainly on the dog's rooms here, but look, it mentions uh, Cookler's yacht, his beauty queen visits his wife. See, I need somebody like that. Looks and brains. All right, fine, fine. Stop begging. I will go with you. <laughs> I don't want you to go with me. Mm, yeah, you do. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. I don't want you to go with me. Joe's got his reunion and I've got my dinner thingy. We're both gonna be late, so I want you to babysit each other. Do you think you can handle that? Don't play with matches. Don't order naked movies. We're good. All right, now here's $20 each for food. No friends over and stay out of trouble or I will come to your school and kiss you at lunch. All right, are you thinking what I'm thinking? How to order naked movies with cash? No, perv. Okay, I'll give you a hint. What comes before part B? Part A. <laughs> Let's throw one. We have 40 bucks and no adults. Why do you want to have a party? Okay, fine. I'll say it in dork. Because the adults are not here. We have a responsibility to be irresponsible. It's a lot of pressure. Cool. So... We'll invite the drama kids, the blog squad, the girl who got struck by lightning, everybody who's interesting. Plus you. A, a couple cheerleaders? No. One cheerleader. Fine. For diversity. <laughs> All right, remember, you're my backup girl, OK? Don't leave me alone with the master of tinfoil. Be out of here just as soon as we can convince me how great the Toledo courthouse will look as a giant ding dong. Hi, excuse me, are you ladies thirsty? Uh... Good call. I would like a dirty martini, extra olives, and my friend here will have a vodka tonic. Please don't card her. She's an adult, even though she buys her clothes at Build a Bear. I like their shoes. We're waiting for the rest of our party to arrive. Gustavo Carvalho, uh, the avant garde artist. Uh, more like con artist. He wraps buildings in tin foil, I assume, to lock in the flavor. Crazy world. Someone could splash paint on a toilet seat and call it art. Exactly. And people pay for that crap. <laughs> You're Gustavo Carvalho, aren't you? How awkward for you. Wow. Well, the good news is uh, my tube top falling down during the electric slide at my Sweet 16 is no longer the most humiliating moment of my life. It's okay. Sometimes even I don't understand my art. One thing I do understand, though, is the effect a beautiful woman has on me. Oh. 
Go on. So that's one dirty martini, extra olives for the lovely councilwoman, and, uh, please, tell me again what you were having. Oh, a lovely cab ride home. Yeah, she was just leaving. I thought I was your backup girl. You were. Your backup girl. Right out the door. Yeah, I can handle this. So, um, you ever foil wrap a city official? Joe Longo? Joe Longo? You showed up. Oh, That is so brave. We heard about everything. It was so awful. But you're still standing. Actually, ladies, I'm uh, doing all right. Yeah, sure you are. You just keep repeating that, honey. Hey, Joe Longo showed up. Mikey, what's going on, man? Longo! Jamie. Oh, my God. What happened? Uh, it's no big deal. I mean, nothing compared to what happened to you, man. It's a tough break. Thank you. I appreciate all of your, uh, <laughs> pity. <laughs> he showed up. Think you owe me a little something something. what everyone here is thinking, this party sucks. Relax, it's still early. The interesting people come fashionably late. That's why they're interesting. All right, there you go. Party officially on. Come on, put on your party face. Six extra large pizzas? That'd be $40. So what's going on here? We're uh, having a party. Yeah, it's the Razor. <laughs> You came at the right time. You can avoid the line to the bathroom. Anyway, thanks for the pizza. And thanks for not tipping. All that extra money would have just weighed me down. You're snarky. I like snarky. You want to stay for the party? Sure. I guess I could stay until the cops break this thing up. Got anything to eat? Uh, pizza. Oh, pizza. That'd be different. <laughs> well, excuse me while I go flirt with girls who aren't here. Sure, that'd be different. You left Facebook, man. Who does that? I needed some privacy till I got back on my feet. No offense, Jamie. Oh, please, I lost a feeling in my legs, not my sense of humor. Hey, Jamie, did I see you driving up in a Porsche Carrera? Oh, yeah. Six cylinders, Bose surround, cherry wood hand controls. I'm telling you, the thing is a chick magnet. Plus, I get to park anywhere I want. Bam! Hey, Joe, you still driving that Porsche of yours? No. Okay, no, would I... you give the poor son of a bitch a break? He's been through a lot. Hey, I didn't ask what happened to all the wavy hair. Hey, this is a choice. Yeah, so is this wheelchair. Oh, my God, guys. Kyle Cookler just called from his helicopter. He's on his way. Please, please, you don't have to apologize. I hear comments like that all the time about my work. What is it? Is it tart? Is it, uh, baked potato? <laughs> is it a big-ass to-go meal? The world's largest garlic bread. Jiffy Pop for giants. I've been saving a lot. I'm flattered you have put so much thought into my work. <laughs> Gustavo, you know, I think Toledo would be very lucky to have your next installation. I, I think it would be very, uh, stimulating. Who? Oh? For the city, not just me. <laughs> you have to take that? Nah, it's just my nanny. He can leave a message. What if it's about your kids? Nah, I left them home alone. Yeah, they're fine. My nanny's at his college reunion. I know exactly what he's calling to say. I'm here, having the time of my life. You were wrong, I was right. You were right, I was wrong. I know I don't say that very often, Mel. No. All right, I've never said that, but what can I say? I am literally having the worst night of my life. The only good news is there's an open bar here. Anyway, I'm not running away. Nope, I am going down swigging. I, I mean, um... I mean, swinging. Oh, hell, I mean swigging. The mayor says he'll give you the key to the city. Well, it's not really a key, it's a magnetic swipey thing. But, you know, it'll give you 10% off anything at the Children's Museum. Mel, please listen to that message. The blinking light is quite insistent. I'm sorry, it's just... I'm literally having the 
worst night of my life. Isabel? Isabel Ryan. Oh my god. Joe Longo? Hey! Hi! Wow, you are not fat and old like half these people. <laughs> and you've been changed a bit. You look great. You look amazing. Thank you. So do you. <laughs> what have you been up to? Yeah, like you don't know. <laughs> oh, you don't know? Um, well, let's just say, uh, I'm sort of in a, uh, in a post-awesome phase. Mm -hmm. well, you and me both. So let's see, last time I talked to you, um, you were gonna get married to Steve, right? And then you were gonna head to New York and become an actress. <laughs> Was that me? Okay, well, Steve is now happily married to Eric. Yep. And you know that musical, Legally Blonde? Yeah. I did 500 performances as left mezzanine usher. But you know what? Life happens, right? You pick yourself up, you put on your lipstick, and you go to your reunion. I did that too. N not the lipstick part, though. <laughs> I've had a few uh, career setbacks myself as of late, and, and uh, currently I'm working as a, um, well, as a, uh, nanny. <laughs> nanny! Beige minivan! Receptionist at my brother's law firm, and I take the bus! <laughs> Me and I never went out. Because you always had a girlfriend, sometimes more than one. Not that guy anymore. <laughs> he was something, though, huh? Um, find a table away from all these annoying, successful people. I'd love to. Let me just make a quick phone call. Okay. Hello, Joe? Steph, hey, look, um, I left Mel a message earlier, um, and I told her I was having a terrible time here, but, um, my night is sort of turning around a little bit, and um, I may be home late. So, um, can you just tell her that I... Joe? Joe? What's that? What's terrible? I can't hear you. Just um, tell her to disregard the previous message, okay? Stephanie, can you hear me? Stephanie, hello. Stephanie, is that um, your girlfriend? No, no. Um... I do not have a girlfriend. I'm Joe Longo's girlfriend. <laughs> I need to get in there. I don't think you're on the list. What's your name? Uh, Saeed Alfabi. Oh, we look different. Some of us work out. <laughs> Two more coming up, all right? Yeah. Mel. Joe! Darling, it's me! Your beautiful, smart, and successful girlfriend. <laughs> You sound like you're having a terrible time. So come on, show me off. I so want to meet all of my Help. boyfriend's classmates. <laughs> oh, is this one of them? Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm Mel Burke, city council person, but also, you know, Joe's girlfriend. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no, she is not my girlfriend. <laughs> all right, fine. I have to be honest, I'm not his girlfriend. I'm his fiance. I just can't get used to saying it out loud. Woo! Not that guy anymore, huh? No, you haven't changed at all. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Nice meeting you. Great shoes. See you at the wedding. Oh. Who's that? She's pretty cute. Yeah, somebody really great that I was just reconnecting with until the love of my life showed up. My fake frigging fiance. Okay, all right. Not to worry. I'm great with people. I will just go over there and talk to her, and I will straighten this out in a jiff, which is shorter than a jiffy. That's how good I am. <laughs> hey. Hi, uh, Isabel. Sorry, I... Funny story, I hope. Um, I'm not actually Joe's girlfriend or his fiance. He works for me, and I thought if I came down here and told people we were a couple, that, look, the point is, Joe's a great guy. You know, he's handsome and smart and funny, and he's gonna make some lucky lady very happy. You know, that kiss back there was awfully convincing. But that, that kiss? No, 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 that was our first and last, okay? And right after we're done talking, I'm gonna go Purell my lips. <laughs> You two obviously hit it off. Well, we were sort of clicking. Good, go, click some more. Click your asses off. Uh, hi. 
Why? Do you want to dance? I thought you'd never ask. So you have a pretty nice boss. Oh, she's not my boss. <laughs> Technically, um, she's my friend. Actually, I'm, I'm really more freelance. But I'm sorry that I doubted you. I just remembered the old Joe Longo, the one who had girls fighting over him. Uh, that guy is not me. That guy is long gone. Stephanie. Stephanie. Don't worry, baby. Mama's here. I... And to think I almost missed this. Well, wasn't that epic? We had more pizzas than people. That was not my fault. I tweeted a great invite. Look, it was witty and clever. Nobody came because they didn't know when to show up. You put the party time as question mark to question mark. No, that is not why... Oh, yeah. Well, why didn't you proofread this before? You don't proofread a tweet. It's 140 characters. How do you screw that up? Well, I guess we better clean up. No one was here to make a mess. We're a disappointment to teenagers everywhere. All right, I sent Stephanie home. And that girl seriously needs to get a life. Always trying to save the day, come to the rescue. What? Okay, I know. I can be overprotective and overinvolved and overdramatic, but that's only because I overcare. Well, you need to get over yourself. I can take care of me. Oh? Did you get Isabel to give you her number? No, after Stephanie's one woman show, I never saw her again. Well, then I think you're gonna be very happy about this. Buy 10 Froyos, get the 11th free? <laughs> Wrong card. Here. Is about Ryan? Is this your phone number? Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't mess everything up. I ran into her in the parking lot, told her what really happened. She said a story as lame as that has got to be true. Thank you, Bert, for repairing almost all the damage that you did. You're welcome. Guess my work here is done. <laughs> oh, great. Just when my night was looking up, Kyle friggin' Cookler. You see that, Mel? A year ago, that was my life. I was that guy. Yeah, well, he's just another tall, rich, extremely handsome loser. Come on, let's get out of here. No. I can handle it. Joe Longo. Mighty Joe Longo. I haven't seen you since graduation. A few things have changed, huh? You read the papers. Yeah, a lot of things have changed. How you been, Kyle? Oh, you hold on, Joe. This is business. You remember that. Yes, Mr. Drexel? What? Yes, of course. I could be at the office in the hour. Uh, no, 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 sir. Not a problem. Yes, with the entire cost breakdown. But, sure. No, no, I, I, I am not at a party. I'm on my way, sir. Look, Joe, uh, I gotta run. Take care, Kyle. We'll see you around. Alyssa! Really? Here? Come on. Well, it looks like your buddy has quite the life. Yeah. Is it terrible I feel so great about that? Not at all. No, you know what? I was wrong about reunions. That, right there, is totally worth you coming. <laughs> so how did your, um, dinner with the foil guy go? Oh, my God. He's in a taxi out front! <laughs> Gustavo. Thank you. Hey, give me that taxi receipt. I can deduct it. <laughs> Lennox, Ryder, what happened here? Did you guys have a party? You wouldn't believe it if we told you. We invited everyone from school, but there may have been a little confusion. Uh, the confusion was two people not listening to me. Upstairs. I'll deal with you two in the morning if you will kindly remind me. I can't believe it. They totally just didn't listen to you. Yeah. It's so cute, they're growing up. <laughs> Whew, what 
a night. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh, by the way, when you went in for that attack kiss of yours, I think you chipped my front tooth. Well, I didn't expect you to open your mouth. My jaw was dropping in shock. God, you really went for it. I was just trying to sell it. Yeah, well, you were pretty convincing. Yeah, well, I'm a good salesperson. Yeah, well, next time, give me a little warning, okay? What do you mean, next time? I don't mean next time, next time. I mean, well, just don't do it again. Huh. Loof, loof, so lucky. <laughs> I don't understand anything you wrote on this market list. Um, no fail? Non-fat yogurt. Oh, okay. What about the wah wee pen? Whole wheat penne. How could I not see that one? Um, Max Flow Tamp? Think about it. Oh, I got it. <laughs> see if you can decode this. Not a friggin' chance. Uh, Joe, have you seen my good black jeans? I can't go to school in my pajamas. Washed and in your room. They're not in my room. Five bucks says that they are. Ten says they're not. Twenty. Fifty. All right, you're on. It's kind of funny. You're not a mom, but you have two kids. You're not in a relationship, and yet you live with the guy, and you haven't been on a real date in six weeks. Twelve. <laughs> no, I am totally fulfilled in my new life. But tell me, Rhonda, are there still men out there, and do they still take women on romantic dates to restaurants and try to take advantage of them? Mm, they do. God bless them. <laughs> oh, God, I missed that. <laughs> Look at me. I'm rich. Double up and says that they're in the uh, dryer. Oh, hey. Look, we never really talked about this, but um, Friday is payday, right? Uh-huh. Good. I might need a small advance. <laughs> Interesting fact. Before this, he actually ran an entire company. Look, we lost a billion dollars, but we never lost our pants. <laughs> date. Theo just wants to discuss arts funding for public schools with me at that really cool new dim someplace where all the couples hang out. Oh, I totally asked you out. <laughs> Can we not be teenagers about this? He totally did. <laughs> oh, and he's like so cute. Oh. So is he giving off any signs? Does he seem interested? Well, I detected several glances that selected portions of me. <laughs> Are we talking boyfriend material? The councilwoman has him under review. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Girl talk. Just business. Yes, we were reviewing critical personnel issues. So then girl talk. Well, I think this is great because let's face it, these days you're not out there hitting the clubs and nothing's hitting me. <laughs> so, what's your next move with Theo? Well, I don't want to be unprofessional. I'm lying. I want to be so unprofessional. Like, slap me with a lawsuit unprofessional. Oh, he's really adorable. Ladies, please, at least wait till I'm out of the room. But I can't just be hitting on the guy when he's lobbying me. I mean, isn't that crossing the line? So make him cross it first. Let him give you a ride home after the next meeting. Then ask him if he wants to come inside. A little chit-chat, flash those baby blues. Do I have to spell this out? No, I have memories. And a videotape one of my old boyfriends made. <sighs> Man, I look good in that tape. You should transfer it to digital so you don't lose it. And then encrypt the crap out of it. <laughs> Gotta go. I have a date. Well, not technically. I'm interviewing new interns. <laughs> oh, hey, let me help you with that. No, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. It's perfectly balanced. Oh, please don't. <laughs> Moved in. Nice. Walls, floor, weight bench, all the comforts of solitary confinement. Where do you sleep? 
This baby. This thing inflates in like 30 seconds. Wow. Look at it go. You better get out of the way. You're good, Burke. Seriously, I thought you said you and Tiffany were going halvesies on all your stuff. Yeah, this is mine. Half. Oh, so when you divided things equally, you got all the invisible stuff? Look, Tiffany is going to be on her own for the first time ever, okay? And, you know, she's never worked. I just wanted to make sure she was going to be okay. I'm trying to be a stand-up guy here. Oh, you're kind of more of a bent-over guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, I just get the... You know what? It's none of my business. What? No, say it. I get the feeling that you believe that if you let her keep all the stuff, that she'll change her mind and take you back. Please, I got everything I wanted. Really? I bet you had a TV. A guy like you probably had a 60-inch, 1080p, HD, LCD, LED, Manavision. 52-inch, which is plenty. The fact of the matter is you now have zero inches. That is by choice, okay? She's gonna be spending a lot of time at home, and she just thought, we thought, it would be best if she took the TV. Like I said, zero inches. You're a nice guy, but you're getting killed here. I'll be back in an hour, because I'm really curious to see what that's going to look like. <laughs> I don't believe it. That was hilarious. What? Nothing. <laughs> oh, come on, share. I bought everything you're wearing. OK, so Aiden, he thinks he's like a super driver. And today, after school, he backs his Beamer right into the headmaster's Mercedes. So then they end up having to call Aiden's dad and Zerk. And he goes, wait, 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 wait a minute. There were a lot of big money words there. <laughs> Since one of their headmasters at public schools. But they're not. It just happened at McAllister. McAllister? You mean McPreppy McSnooty Academy? The one you're glad to be out of? Well, everybody I know is still there. But what about making some new friends at Grant? Where you go every day for eight hours, or so I'm told. I already have friends. Yes, but those friends will give you carpal tunnel. <laughs> Here's a crazy thought. What about making some friends that you can talk to even in a blackout? OMG. <laughs> I have nothing in common with these people. Because you haven't given them a chance. Get to know them. Then maybe you can get their numbers and text them. I knew you wouldn't get it. Burke, you are absolutely right. Tiffany's been pushing me around. I need to stand there for myself and be a man. I'm getting my inches back. All the time. We were talking about televisions. <laughs>
Okay, so you think that she might want you back because she's keeping a chair. Two plus two? Four every time. <laughs> oh, that looks great. Uh, look, I put a lot of thought into the design of the room here, and Frat House Rec Room was not part of the scheme. <laughs> Come on, Aunt Mel, it's high def. And I'm low tolerance. <laughs> Besides, it's Joe's TV. Oh, it's fine. I can live up here. Actually, downstairs would be so much better. You know, Ryder, downstairs would be so much better. No, you can't. This is the first time this house has officially not sucked. Wow, it's nice that you don't hold back. <laughs> Ryder, look, I know you like it, but if my interior decorator ever saw this... Oh, my God, baby penguins! <laughs> Sit. No. Oh, they're so cute! And crisp! I want a penguin! <laughs> I couldn't tell how I was doing there. I mean, some of the old guys on the city council are pretty tough. Gunderson was just staring at me with this blank, creepy expression the whole time. Oh, don't mind him. He died three years ago. <laughs> and then I won't take it personally. Do you think we have the votes? Well, just because it's you, I called in a few favors. What kind of favors? Votey favors. Just for you. Wow. Looks like we're moving in the right direction. That is the goal. Would you like to, um, come in and... come in? <laughs> what is this? This is an amazing comeback, is what this is. The Bengals were down by 14 points two minutes ago. Come now, they're even. Can you believe this? No, I can't believe this. Why don't we take this into the kitchen? Who's got the ball? Chargers. Chargers. Wow, what a beautiful picture. <laughs> They're going for it on fourth down? It's been that kind of game, man. Look, Theo, I... Oh! Oh! oh, did you see that interception? <laughs> yes, I did. So, before I brief you, brief me. How did it go with Theo Morton, the Orlando Bloom of Ohio Arts Funding? <laughs> Have we segue from lobbyist to potential down-the-line boyfriend? I had him. I was this close. Then I lost him by two touchdowns. What are you talking about? Joe made him watch football. My nanny stole my date. Ugh, man, when I saw you and Theo leaving together, I thought, this is it. The drought is over. So did I. But then it all turned to crap and high def. That's it, okay? I gotta explain some rules to Joe. What can and cannot happen under my roof. Yeah, let him have it hard so you're not snapping at me all day. I never do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you just wait in the car for me? Joe. Mark. Uh, we need to go over a few things. Look, if it's about the soy milk, I'm sorry, all right? I threw it out because I thought it went bad. I had no idea that god awful odor was the correct smell. No, 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 this is more global. ML, I need to talk to you. Yeah, in a minute, Lennox. No, it'll be really fast, I promise. Okay, so I was thinking about what you said about me not making friends at my new school and not moving on with my life, so I've made a decision. I want to go back to my old school. Ah, the one that's two hours and $40,000 away? Yeah, but they give you lunch. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about this tonight. Yes, we will. She has no idea how to uh, read you. <laughs> and that would be my segue back to you. Uh, here's the thing. When I bring a guy home, like, for instance, last night, it would be unbelievably preferable if there was no sports bar right here. So Theo was from work? Yes. But you were trying to... Yes. And then you saw the TV. Yes, yes, and then no, so therefore no. <laughs> wow, talk about missing a signal. This to you is an apology? It's not my missing, no. I'm not the one that messed up your night, Burke. Trust me, that night was going nowhere. <laughs> we were headed somewhere. Really? I mean, come on. The guy started watching the game. So? He's a guy. Exactly. And when a guy is into you, he's sticking with his man parts, okay? And man parts, <laughs> they don't care about high def. Ah, relationship analysis from a guy who thinks a woman still loves him because she's keeping his chair. Hey, that chair is significant. Move on! Sit somewhere else! <laughs> Don't get mad at me, all right? I'm not the one that messed up your little schoolgirl crush. Oh, it was not a schoolgirl crush. Oh, a text from Theo. Oh, you are so gonna eat your words. Check this out. Dinner tonight. That's it? Two words? Yeah, but they mean a great deal. <laughs> they mean that he's hungry. Yeah, hungry for love. Of food. You are so wrong. And by so wrong, you mean I'm so right. I'll show you. Really? What are you gonna show me? That this means so much more than your ridiculous old club chair. Will you leave my chair out of this, please? 
We really need to get into work now. Gladly. Dinner. Just a dinner. Just a chair. <laughs>
boyfriend? What the hell does that mean? That he's gay. Gay? Yeah, you know, he likes guys. And cats. Probably the musical Cats. But he liked football and he flirted. Oh, he intentionally jammed my gaydar. Don't worry about it, all right? I dated a lesbian once. She was actually a nice girl. Look, you're just not the best at judging signals, so what? He was using me, and it was all completely political. And now he's done pretending and he's back with his boyfriend and their dying cat. Oh, I hope they're happy. <laughs> You're just itching to say, I told you so, aren't you? Hey, I just got dumped for a chair. This was all about his public arts funding scheme. Oh, well, that's it. From now on, I'm only supporting technical schools, okay? The arts can bite me. <laughs> hey, Ryder, Ryder, hey, get back downstairs and get that TV back up here. I want 52 inches of plasma in front of my face pronto. Oh, but I just took oh, okay. it. <laughs> look, 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 look. When they finally agree with you on something, you just shut your mouth and you go with it. I'm gonna learn a lot from you, aren't I? Damn straight, boy. beautiful things that I've ever seen. So can we keep the TV? It'll help me make more friends. You know, I didn't think I could adjust to it at first, but now that it's here, I guess it's not so bad. <laughs> what is that? What is that? It's a leopard seal. It's, it's going after the... Oh, my God. All right, we're going to need to uh, change the channel here. Does know what the remote is? Anybody got the remote? <laughs> came up with HD. Oh, oh, oh God. Here, don't, I'll plug your eyes. Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. In three, two, one. There they are. Oh, well, thanks for waiting up for us, Grandma. Hey, Joe. Fletcher, it is 11 o'clock on the dot. Last three times you guys have walked through that door, it's been exactly 11. You're like a cuckoo clock. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he's very reliable. He's very punctual. Well, I know how reliability gets you all hot and bothered, so... <laughs> I'll leave you two uh, punctual kids alone. I had a really nice time tonight. Good restaurant, right? Yeah, it was a great restaurant, good bottle of wine. If my mother had shown up sober to say she was proud of me, it would have been off the charts. <laughs> I'm sorry, you were waiting for your mother tonight? No, 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 it was just a, a little joke. <laughs> oh. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> Sometimes it takes me a little. I know. <laughs> so can I call you tomorrow? Sure, you can. It's four o'clock okay? Surprise me. Okay. <laughs> Sometime between 4 and 4.30. Ooh, the suspense. <laughs> so, three dates in a row with the same guy, huh? Has Fletcher finally cracked the Mel Burke code? Well, he keeps asking me out, and I keep saying yes. I mean, a girl's got to eat. That is uh, so incredibly romantic. <laughs> so you're going to cut him loose soon or uh, squeeze a few more fancy meals out of him first? Oh, believe me, I'm not squeezing anything. He's not, I, I don't know, I just don't think this thing has any legs, you know? I mean, he's a perfectly nice guy. Yeah. Words that have never preceded sex. The problem with him is, I don't know what the problem with him is. You find something wrong with every guy that you go out with. Not true. Of course it is. Why, uh, uh, Charlie stared at you too romantically, right? It made you all nauseous. 
And then there was a, a Jonathan with those massages. Yeah, well, his hands were cold and slimy. I mean, it was like when I touched the eel at the aquarium, but at least the eel had a little electricity. <laughs> and then there was that other guy you went out with. Uh, what was his name again? Sasha. Yeah, yeah, Sasha. What was uh, wrong with him? Uh, his name was Sasha. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll give you that one. <laughs> I tell you, you really do find the flaws in everyone, though. I'm glad you're not going out with me. God knows what you'd find wrong. Oh, do you want the full list, the top ten, or just the bullet points? You have a list? <laughs> do I have a list? <laughs> All right, let's see. For starters, uh, your arms, yeah, they're way too big. And, uh, oh, you always have an answer for everything. <laughs> That's only because when yeah, you... Ah, 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 ah. Look, you don't have to swagger into every woman's life with your tool belt and hammer away at her problems. First of all, I don't hammer away. I fix. Oh, well, what if we don't need fixing? God, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> oh, 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 there it goes. Adios, Fletcher. <laughs> well, I just don't think... Look, he's not the future Mr. Mel Burke. <laughs> and there's your problem. It's all good. All good. It's okay. from Kirsten Cullen? W what? No. But you like her. I don't know. I mean, I stare at her a lot, and I think about her at night and all other times. But, but look, it doesn't matter because she doesn't know I exist. Ah, uh, the power of loser thinking. <laughs> Listen, Kirsten only hangs out with hipsters, and that's so not you. I'm cool inside. No, you're not. <laughs> you're socially invisible. I mean, look at you. Why do you wear these things? They're in my drawer. <laughs> they're in your drawer because even the clothes know they're not cool and they're trying to hide. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you need so much help. Come on, let's fix you. What? I'm not that bad. Okay, the first step is admitting you have a problem. But I'm not... Admit it. <sighs> Fine. My name is Ryder and I'm not hip. Help me, please. Okay, first lesson. Hipsters don't say hip. <laughs> Aunt Mel, look at you. <laughs> I'm turning the knob to sizzling and going out with my girls. <laughs> wow, Burke. All this for a man you're about to dump. <laughs> it's kind of cruel. Okay, this is not for Fletcher. Whose flaw I figured out, by the way. He just doesn't get you? Yeah, it's like when I say something. He never violates back? Yeah, I have to wait forever. And then he just leaves you hanging. Like meat on a hook. By the way, try tip tomorrow night. So the more are you going, looking all like this? Oh, some of my college girlfriends threw together a last minute Sex in the City of Toledo night, so uh, I'm going to get my Cosmo on. Oh, well, don't drink too much. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> All right, so the meeting of the Foxy Five will now come to order, and I will read the minutes from the last meeting. Woohoo! <laughs> I move the minutes are approved. I second. Woohoo! <laughs> all right, so updates all around the table. Kelly? Mr. Jameson just got a huge promotion, so Mrs. Jameson gets a new kitchen. Oh, that you'll never go into. <laughs> all right, you're up, Lauren. Ted and I are almost done planning the wedding. Berkshires, snow, tons of alcohol, and the cutest ski hats with our wedding date embroidered on the pom pom. <laughs> you all better be there. No, you'll wear the peach taffeta bridesmaids dresses from Kelly's wedding. Oh, it'd be a shame not to see those again. Some of us won't fit in them anymore. You're knocked off again. Sorry, Ev. Flush with child. <laughs> not drinking the ginger ale because I like it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jackie, you're awfully quiet. Um, because I got nothing. <laughs> Same old, same old. You and me both, sister. Here's to the same old. Oh, uh, you know what? Wait, there is uh, one thing. Boing! <gasps> oh, oh, my God! God. <laughs> oh, yay. Hallelujah! The last of the Foxy Five to get married! <laughs> hey, hello! What about me? Oh, my God, that's right. You're still not married. You're kind of married. You're Toledo's wife. No, 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 no. I am to Toledo what Carrie Bradshaw was to New York. We're Leba. <laughs> to Jackie and Steve. Steve? The chiropractor? This you're not worth waxing for? I know it sounds like I settled. It's okay. Passable? It's a new perfect. <laughs> Come on, we are on the wrong side of 30. I just sort of felt it was time to get real. I mean, the music stopped and I just sat down at the nearest chair. Well, good for you. And while you're all off being married and popping out adorable kids that will one day give you the finger, trust me, I've seen it. I will be your cool single friend and you'll all be wildly jealous of my freedom and lack of stretch marks, so <laughs> let us drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? I'm home! Oh, good. Hey, um, 
here are the latest roses from Fletcher. <laughs> and a trash can at the ready. Ha, 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 very funny. Now, these are beautiful. Yeah, so, uh, dump them? Actually, no. I want to keep them. I'm sorry, did you hear me? I said that they're from Fletcher. Yeah, I heard you. Blonde, not deaf. <laughs> Uh, we're still talking about uh, Fletcher McKay here, right? Uh, laugh a minute, Fletcher. Yeah, look, Joe, I was thinking a lot about what you said, you know, about, uh, about me pushing men away and finding flaws, and yeah, I think you're right. You know, nobody's perfect, and so I think I'm gonna give Fletcher a try. Because sooner or later, the music stops, and you gotta sit down. This uh, music you're talking about, does anybody else hear it? <laughs> Is it like a polka? <laughs> Where the heck is Ryder? I called him 10 minutes ago. It's his turn to set the table tonight. He's coming. He's coming. Sorry, Joe. I'm so hip, I can't feel my legs. Wow. Those are some, some tight pants, bro. Are all your parts okay? I don't know. I can't feel those either. Well, you better get used to those pants if you're wearing them to school tomorrow. Isn't there another way? Yeah, why don't you just wear something from your Invisible Loser collection and see how that goes? You look good. Suck it up. Believe me, everything possible is sucked up. So who's the uh, girl? How do you know there's a girl? Oh, there's got to be a girl. Nobody's going to squash his grapes for the guys. Come on, let's walk you around the block and get you used to it. I can't do it. Think of Kirsten. Kirsten, Kirsten, Kirsten. Not working. Hello. Hey. Wow, nice jeans. I have the same ones. <laughs> Betting the same size. <laughs> Can I help you with something? I'm waiting for Mel. Oh, she'll be down in a minute. Something better. Shoes, and then I stop listening. Beautiful flowers. What are they doing back here? They should be on display. Oh, I was right. They're from Fletcher. Boy, back from the dead, huh? Who saw that coming? Yeah. What happened there? Who said something happened? Things get raised from the dead all the time. Stephanie, a couple of days ago, uh, she was about ready to dump him. Now she's sniffing his flowers. Between those two points in time is something that you know. Uh, um, I'm gonna go uh, help Mel with her shoes. Coming, Mel! Stephanie, um, are you doing something different with your hair? Uh, um, maybe I washed it. <laughs> Oh, it's just, um, it's this shampoo. It's got, uh... <laughs> an essence of coconut in it. It's, it's really just not fair. All the Foxy Five are coupled up except for Mel, and she's totally wigging out. She doesn't want to be the only single Foxy. <laughs> I'm so weak. Do you have any orange juice? Sorry I had to do that to you, Steph. Don't be. Being sniffed by you is the highlight of my week. <laughs> What do you say to lunch? Well, hello, lunch. How you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry. Backspace, backspace. Um, I'd be delighted to have lunch. <laughs> oh, but before we go, look what I got for us. Tickets to see Ricky Gervais live Friday night at the Toledo Opera House, the Founders Box. We'll be like those old men in the Muppets. <laughs> Ricky Gervais, yeah, he's that guy from the... And he was in that, um... Wait, who's Ricky Gervais again? <laughs> he's the funny comedian. And I'd love to go, but I'm driving to Chicago for my parents' 40th wedding anniversary. Rain check? Yeah, I mean, who needs to see the funniest guy on the planet? It's not like he's the funniest guy in the universe. Because, you know, those comedy clubs in Mars, you can hear the laughs on Jupiter. I love how you talk. I have no idea what you're saying, but I enjoy your melody. Maybe that's what Mel is short for. Get it? Uh... <sighs> so much funnier around you. Really? <laughs> um, you know, uh... Well, Chicago, that's a, that's a long trip to take all by yourself. Maybe you need someone to come with you, you know? Someone to keep you company. Someone cute and fun and makes you laugh. <laughs> me, Fletcher, me. Oh, good. I thought you were talking about that Ricky Gervais guy again. <laughs> really? You, you'd come with me? Well, now that you ask. Yeah, yeah, I would. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, this is kind of a big step for us. 
You meeting my entire family in one fell swoop? Yeah, well, I am ready for that swoop. You sure it's not too much too soon? No. No, it's good. Yeah, and I have no second thoughts at all. At all. Ryder, Lennox, school, right now. <laughs> oh, hey, good morning. Actually, fantastic morning. Um, listen, would you be okay with watching the kids for the weekend? I was thinking about going away on a trip. Uh, I have a date planned somewhere in there, but yeah, sure, why not? I guess leaving the kids home alone for a few hours on a tent will be okay. So, yeah, running like the wind. <laughs> you and the ladies have a uh, foxy weekend. Oh, I'm not going with the foxies. No, this is a uh, going away with Fletcher weekend to Chicago for his parents' 40th anniversary wing ding thing. Wow, the whole family? That, that sounds serious. Oh, it's not that serious. No, I mean, judging from Fletcher in the history of genetics, that sounds serious. <laughs> As in, you know, um, not a lot of laughs. No, he's getting funnier, okay? The other day he made sort of a joke. It was actually kind of sweet. He said my name Mel and that it was probably short for Melody. <laughs> That is hilarious. <laughs> so seriously, what's, um, what the heck's going on here? What do you mean, what the heck's going on here? Well, look, I, I know you hate when I say things about your personal life. Yeah, but you say them anyway. Well, of course I do, because they're valuable, and at the end of the day, you appreciate them. Oh, is that what you tell yourself? I... Sorry, we're late. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, for a girl? Yeah, for a girl. Uh, Joe, shouldn't we be getting to school? What are you, the vice principal? We'll leave when we leave. <laughs> but you said... Two minutes. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Ryder, you need any money for lunch? Oh, no, nothing could fit in my pockets. <laughs> hey, I'm not done with you. I didn't think you were. Look, you are pretending to like Fletcher, but you don't, okay? There, I said it. We're both thinking it, but now it's out in the open. Nobody was thinking it, and I am not pretending to like Fletcher. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. He's a wonderful guy whose charms I did not fully appreciate at first, but after Oh, come spending... on, that is such bull. Look, look, look. All your college friends are either married or getting married, and now you're up there all alone. You know, there's one last marriage helicopter, and it's circling, and all of a sudden, some boring guy reaches out, and he goes, come on, you're not getting any younger. Just give me your hand. Oh, so being single is like the fall of Saigon? According to the uh, foxy ladies. How do you even know what we talked about anyway? I have my sources. Oh, okay, so you said five or six nice things to Stephanie and she spilled. Only took two. Look, um, you are settling and you know it. I am not settling, okay? I am reconsidering based on current options. Settling. I'm not. R2. No, I'm not. I'm going with Fletcher. Well, have a nice weekend. Fine, I will. Oh, and here, two tickets to Ricky Gervais. Wow, the funniest guy on the planet. Yeah, I know, enjoy. <laughs> are we going to school? Will you get a life? <laughs> Well, I am all ready for a big weekend with your parents. What weekend? Huh? Huh? How'd you go in there? I'm on a roll, right? <laughs> yeah, you are a pistol. All right, so just don't do that again, because you might hurt yourself. <laughs> all right, so I will see you Sunday. Have a good time. Thanks. So, bye. Bye. All right, let's hit the road, Jack. I'm Fletcher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Kirsten! Come here, come here. So, your brother left these in class today. Actually, he dropped them and ran when I said hi, but, you know, figured Ryder might need it for homework. Okay. Wait, you know my brother's name? Yeah, we share a table in Earth Science. We actually made a fake fossil together. Oh, yeah, he sleeps with that thing. I mean, he keeps it on his nightstand. <laughs> So, is he okay? I mean, he's been acting so strange this week and dressing so weird. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, about Ryder, would you ever consider, you know, hanging out? Sure, if he just dropped this thing he's doing. You know, with the clothes, he's having some trouble walking. <laughs> I think he has, like, a hip injury. Hey, Lennox. Oh, my God. You're here in my house, and I'm, um... I'm gonna go change into my real clothes. Stop! <laughs> Go back to loser. She likes it. Oh, really? So, uh, no more skinny jeans? Nope. Hi. Hi. Problem solved. <laughs> oh, it's like watching puppies. <laughs> Denise, hey, it's Joe. Yeah, I was just calling to make sure that we're still on for 8 o'clock tonight. Yeah. All right, perfect. I'll see you then. Oh, and guess what? I got us two tickets to see Ricky Gervais. Huh? Gervais. He, 
he's a comedian. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, Denise. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, all right, well, uh, yeah, okay, then I'll be there at eight o'clock. All right, J Google him, all right? Bye-bye. <laughs> I think she's related to Fletcher. Kirsten's out there. Long story short, I'm making them popcorn. The first one are so cute and random. <laughs> Longo. Hey, Mel. I expect to hear from you. What? Yes. I'm on my way. Uh, I'll be right back, okay? So make sure you finish your chemistry homework and uh, don't burn the place down. And uh, if you think of something uh, wild and crazy to do, uh, just don't do it. <clears throat> He left you in a rest stop in the middle of nowhere? What kind of a guy leaves a woman in a place like this? Joe, calm down, okay? Thank you for coming, but you don't... No, no, have... I want to bring his little scrawny lawyer neck out. How... married like um like was married and got divorced already married no like married with another wife married mm, more wine yeah oh ladies i'm gonna run to the store do you need anything more wine lots more wine oh who's this oh nobody joe hey hi <laughs> hi i'm jackie sup <laughs> Oh, Jackie, oh, you're the one that just got engaged. How's, uh, how's uh, your fiancé? Already married. <laughs> yeah, but I'm cool. You uh, want me to come to the store with you? Uh... No, 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 sweetie, you stay here, okay? <laughs> you go, go, run, run for your life. <laughs> You'd kill him, sweetie. <laughs>
Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Joe! Joe! Yeah, what's up? Nice outfit. So do you do the Y, the M, the C, or the A? <laughs> Laugh, Burke. Go ahead, go ahead. But I just spent the last two hours doing some very labor-intensive work, all right? I just put a custom, fully tricked out four-tier spice rack for you. Which I asked for when? All right, it was for me. <clears throat> but you just paid for it. <laughs> You're old, Marley. What'd you do, just vote yes on everything and call it a day? I texted Lennox that I had a big surprise. You remember that Green Day concert that sold out in six minutes? Well, guess who scored two tickets? Four seats? How did you swing that? What? I'm a city councilwoman, okay? I'm a very important person. All right, I'm a semi-important person. Fine, I won them on the radio. All right, one of my interns won them on the radio and she gave them to me. All right, I took them from her. Sorry I had to break you down like that. Let me show you something in the kitchen. Wow, nice rack. Thank you. I didn't get all offended, see? But that's not what this is about. <clears throat> Lennox just gave me this. All right, I found it in the car. All right, she shoved it in the ashtray. It's annoying that I didn't start with what really happened first, isn't it? It's from our chemistry teacher. Unrealized potential, needs parental guidance, danger of failing. Wow, if this said forgets to wear a bra, it would be like deja vu of me in high school. She needs to get a B on her next exam, and every exam after that just to pass. So I have to help her study? Oh, no. What, you didn't retain a lot of your high school chemistry? No, I did. Never mix beer and vodka. <laughs> okay, I know what I have to do, all right? I have to come down hard on her. Right after that concert on Monday night. The uh, Monday night before the Tuesday exam? Yeah, what's your point? Oh, that was your point. <laughs> oh, come on. Let me be Fun Aunt Mel. Everybody loves Fun Aunt Mel. Yeah, Fun Aunt Mel. Isn't she related to dropout pregnant niece? Aunt Mel. I got your text. What's the big surprise? Uh, it's, well, see, some of the surprise is good, and some of the surprise is not so good. Less failing from you, more parenting from you. Surprise, you're both grounded. <laughs> oh, man. I guess you're stuck with me. I should be hard on her, but it's just so hard. It's not that hard. Uh, it's not hard for you. I mean, you're not likable. <laughs> I'm completely lovable. I mean, it's what I'm known for. You know, that and my legs. <laughs> yes, they're lovely. Would you like me to go in there and talk to Lennox? No, 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 no. I can handle this by myself, okay? I don't need your help. Oh, just tell me what to say. All right, go in there and just lay down the law, okay? Right, right, law. Laying it down. Yes, and no matter what she says, remember, you are tough Aunt Mel. You're like steel. Lovable steel? Yeah, steel with a soft, squishy center. Oh, I like that. Oh, get in there, will you? Um, she will call you back when she wins the Nobel Prize. All right, look, Lennox, I have been too easy on you. That's why I like you. You're easy, Aunt Mel. No, I'm not easy, I'm fun. No, that's over, okay? I want you to study chapters eight and 10 and do this first practice test. And then I can go to Jillian's party. No, 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 no fun, no phone calls, and no entertainment. How long do I have to sit here studying chemistry? Until you know everything, all right? Oxygen, hydrogen, thallium, all the chemicals. <laughs> oh, boy, that's a lot of homework. How's that going? Good. How's it going being a social zero? Fun. I hang out with all the other zeros on your tests. Ryder, leave her alone, all right? Or you'll be stuck here studying chemistry, too. I don't take chemistry. Yeah, well, keep talking back and you will, mister. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're here to talk to me about Jesus, I'm already a fan. Not a solicitor. Just a former U.S. senator wanting to see my lovely family and whoever you are. Thanks, Pete. That'll do it. Senator Burke, it's a pleasure to meet you. I have no doubt. <laughs> and you are? Uh, I'm Joe Longo. I, I, I take care of the... I'm the nanny. 
Don't be ashamed. It's a changing world, and I admire a man who takes on a woman's role. Mrs. Burke and I sometimes play golf with a male kindergarten teacher. He's a homosexual. I had to take this job because I used to work for your son-in-law, Lewis. Uh, yeah, and that jerk took everything from me. My house, my cars, my savings. Yeah. It's a very nice Rolex. <laughs> I used to have a Rolex. Hey, Daddy, what are you doing here? Hey, sugar, didn't you get my email? I'm in town for the Chamber of Commerce luncheon. Oh, but that's not till Friday. I'm early, you lucky girl. <laughs> Where's Mom? Didn't she come with you? No, she's having one of her little nippy-tucky weekends. Is there anything left to tuck? You'd be amazed. <laughs> Here, a present for my little girl. You know, I remember how much you used to love these when you were growing up. Oh, uh, no, Daddy. See, that was your other daughter. Here's how you can tell us apart. I have blue eyes and Meredith is in jail. <laughs> Where are my two favorite grandchildren? Hey, Grandpa. Hey, buddy. Hi. I'm on lockdown. If I leave the kitchen, my ankle bracelet will go off. At least Lindsay Lohan got sushi. So, Princess, what are you in for? Oh, well, someone hasn't been studying, and someone is on the verge of failing, and these someones are the same someone. Tell you what, I have a limo outside. What do you say we head back to my hotel and take a swim in their big-ass pool? <laughs> awesome. God. Yeah, that might be a big-ass problem. See, Lennox is in serious academic trouble. Look, I understand you're new to this Guardian thing, but let me give you the benefit of my years of experience. Pull the stick out and lighten the hell up. <laughs> Pumpkin. Wow, I thought she only made that face for me. <laughs> Hey, kids, why don't you take your grandpa upstairs and show him things, um, well, that aren't downstairs. <laughs> nice deflection, Nanny Joe. <laughs> okay, I'll spend 10 minutes with the children, and then I'll head back to my hotel, and I will never try to be a loving grandfather again. Uh, well, thanks for not guilting me, Dad. Ladies and gentlemen, former Senator Russell Burke, representing the great state of himself. <laughs> Stephanie, it's a power outage. I'm busy being a hard ass here. I mean, do they really need me? It's not like I can turn the lights back on. <laughs> yes, Steph, I know I have a megawatt smile. Just go, I can cover. I'll be your uh, backup hard ass. Fine, I'll be there. All right, just don't let Lennox slack off. I won't. Look, she's in there right now working on a practice test. See? Wait, how do you know she's not just doing the Cosmo quiz? Uh, because first of all, you already did the Cosmo quiz. And you did it in pen, so you ruined it for everybody else. And second, every 15 minutes, she looks up and she says, oh, this friggin' practice test. Okay, just don't let her get back on her phone again. Yeah, that'd be kind of hard for her to do. You know why? Because her phone is right here. Oh, good. All right, no phone, no grandpa, no distractions. Just give her a little water if she asks. Yeah, and if she's good, I'll give her an hour out in the yard. Go, enjoy your blackout. <laughs> hey, how does my hair look? Oh, what am I asking? It's a blackout. Hey, Joe. Senator Burke? Oh, um, you dismissed your daughter. What a shame. <laughs> Joe, good to see you again. You too. Why are you here? Hey, Grandpa. <laughs> Just want to take my beloved grandson out for the evening, if that's all right. Um, well, yeah, I guess that's okay. Hey, you mind if your sister comes with us? Yeah, sure, I'll go get her. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait, Lennox has a lot of work to do and has a big test on Tuesday. She'll study better if she gets a little break, and we don't know how much more time these kids are gonna get with their poor old grandpa. <laughs> Joseph, give me an hour. Look, Senator, I... You I'd can to... time us with this Rolex. <laughs> Your Rolex. <laughs> No, I, 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 I could never take anything this nice and yet so much like my old one. Here we go, kids. See you in an hour. Yeah, okay, an hour. Hello, old friend. <laughs> oh, look at that face. Oh, that's what happens when you ride them backwards. <laughs> no, seriously. 11 o'clock. You said you'd be back by 8. I know, but you had my watch. My phone. It's been four hours. Yeah, four of the greatest hours ever. Holla. Holla. Listen. 
The only reason it took so long is because Lennox needed a little time to go to her party. You're kidding me, right? Do you know how tweeted that party was? <laughs> Whatever that means. You went to a high school party? God, no. That would be very inappropriate. I can't make that mistake again. We dropped her off, and Grandpa and I hung it out at the arcade. Oh, really? Why stop there? Why not just hit a few strip clubs? Maybe take a little flight into Vegas. Joseph, you sound peeved. Yes, I am. Holla! <laughs> Kids, why don't you scurry on up to bed? All right, night, Hi. Grandpa. Thanks. You bet. We had an agreement, Senator. We said one hour. Well, I tacked on a little amendment. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Nobody got hurt, and nobody needs to know. Why stir up a hornet's nest? Man, that watch, that watch was made for you. Well, the power's back on. Yippee! <laughs> I did not get to wear a hard hat. I stepped in mud, I hope. And the only burly construction worker that whistled at me was named Allison. <laughs> so, uh, was Lennox in a bad mood the whole time? No, I can honestly say that was not the case. <laughs> Mel, look, uh... Hey, look at this practice test. 87%? Wow! I think this whole hard-ass parent thing is working for me. I hate to tell you this, but that test is not the whole story. No, 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 no. Only positive energy, okay? Just let me have this one shining moment where everything worked out. Ugh. Look at this beautiful practice test. Mm, it even smells good. Makes me want to roll it up and smoke it. <laughs> wonderful dream last night, Lennox was graduating from Harvard and Yale. <laughs> and she thanked me for that one fateful night I made her stay home and study. Look, uh, Mel, about last night, um, Russell came back over here and it wasn't pretty. Oh, I'm really sorry you had to deal with my dad, but thank you for laying down the law, deputy hard ass. <laughs> oh, morning. Good morning, Lennox. Hey, I saw your practice test. Nice work. Unrealized potential. Getting realized. <laughs> You're in a good mood. I thought you'd be mad at me. Why would I be mad at you? Oh, you you didn't talk to Grandpa? Lennox, let me tell her, okay? I'm gonna go live with Grandpa in D.C. What? what? Whoa, when did this happen? You're going to Harvard and Yale. Come on, don't kill my dream. <laughs> Grandpa brought it up when he was driving me home. Home from where? Jillian's party. You went to the party? You let her leave the house and no one told me? Back the truck up. <laughs> Okay, well, Grandpa said, since you're having trouble dealing with me, why don't I come and live with him and Grandma in D.C., where I'll get a yellow Mini Cooper on my 16th birthday. <laughs> Joe, were you home at all last night when these extensive plans got made? You wanted to have a good night and smoke a practice test. <laughs> I think we both got filibustered by your uh, dad here. Filibustered hard. So, what do you say, Aunt Mel? I say... I need a quiet moment to meditate. You want a glass? Glasses only slow me down. Oh, hey. Uh, I just want to let you know I uh, dropped the kids off at school and I uh, went over the elements with Lennox the whole way, so. I'm glad to see you didn't open that. Yeah, well, you don't have to open it to throw it at someone. <laughs> Go ahead. Chick stig scars. It's not you. It's Russell. You're not the first nanny he seduced. Of course, most of them got jewelry. Uh -huh. You know, I invited my dad over for dinner tonight, and I have no idea what to say to him. I mean, I can't win. If things are bad now, how bad are they going to be when I force her to stay? And I have to force her to stay. I mean, can you imagine what will happen if she goes to live with him? It'll be one big downward spiral. And I've fallen down that spiral myself before. Literally. We had a spiral staircase at the Georgetown house. It was junior prom after party and I was so wasted, I broke three teeth and flashed the entire kitchen staff. Okay. Look, if, if you wanna win, I mean, if you wanna keep Lennox here, then you need to fight her, okay? And the way to fight her is by not fighting her. Is that from the Karate Kid? Maybe, yeah. The point is, though, it's the classic team gambit, okay? It's the game of chicken, 
right? You, you guys are both in the same car and you're headed toward the edge of a cliff, right? And she thinks you're gonna turn to her and scream, Lennox, no, stop, please, not the cliff, it's a horrible mistake. But she's not gonna say that. What you're gonna say is, Lennox, go faster. Look at that beautiful cliff. Hey, let's see if your little yellow Mini Cooper can fly. And I promise you, she will back off. You think that'll work? Yes, guaranteed. I mean, you're desperate, right? <laughs> I really thought you'd be fighting me on this Linux move, Mel, the way you fought me on everything when you were growing up. I never fought you on anything, and if I did, you started it. Fred? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Sure. Um, anyway, I, um, I figure you guys have thought this through, and if this is what Lennox wants, let's, let's go with that. Wow. I'm really gonna miss you when you're gone. Oh, but Joe, uh, when she leaves, we're turning a room into a gym. <laughs> You know, with Grandpa, I don't have to have the 10 o'clock curfew. He says I can stay out till 11. Hey, Mel, what time was um, your curfew when you were Lennox's age? Gee, um, you know, I don't, I don't think I had a curfew. I mean, I stayed out a lot of nights, right, Daddy? <laughs> I suppose that's true. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be so awesome. Um, yeah, uh, you know, Grandma and Grandpa are really relaxed about that stuff. Hey, is that family planning clinic still at 17th and P? I imagine. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find it. You know, living with Russell and Monica is like not having parents at all. Isn't that great? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I guess. I'm still gonna go to school, right? Absolutely. But not one of those academically taxing Ivy League feeder schools. No, you want to go to a more relaxed institution. Where the pretty girls go. Wait a minute, what? Bread. No, did you hear what he just said? Bread. I... Don't worry, they'll have mixers with the real schools, and that way you can meet a promising young man who's going someplace. Hook the right one, reel him in, and you're set for life. Okay, all right, what is she, just some, some prize steer you're gonna take to market? Joe, easy. Look, Russell, Lennox is smart, okay? And Mel expects her to be more than just some guy's arm candy, and that's why she's hard on her. Let's be realistic. That face is wasted stuck in a book. What? Your face is wasted stuck on your neck. <laughs> Joe, get back in the car. No, I can't. Did you hear what he just said? Someone's nanny's got his apron in a bunch. Okay, all right. You know what? That's it. Your Aunt Mel is going to shut this down right now. You know why? Because she is your legal guardian. Okay, I think I have a say in this. Yeah, and so do I. Joseph, might I have a word with you in the kitchen? Save your forks. <laughs> what were you doing? We were right at the cliff. She was about to put on the brakes, and then you grabbed the steering wheel and drove her straight to D.C. He can't say those things about Lennox, all right? It's not fair to you, and it's not fair to her. Who cares? You completely lost it. You went rogue. You totally blew the mission. He needed telling off, all right? And I'm the man in the house, and I was the one who was going to... Wow. <laughs> Can we go back in there and try this again? It was a very good plan. <clears throat> Joe. No do-overs, all right? It's over. She's gone. There's nothing we can do. Aunt Mel? Oh, a dessert in a minute, sweetie. I just wanted to say, this whole idea of me moving to Washington? Oh, yeah, that cool idea, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm starting to think it's not the right move. I feel like I'm driving off some kind of cliff here. Really? You, you think so? Yeah, I mean, I just... I don't want to be some guy's arm candy. And if there's any chance of me making something of myself, I'd probably be better off here with, you know, someone to push me. And if I go and live with Grandpa in Washington, I could end up like you. <laughs> well, not the now you, the messy-haired mugshot you. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. I thought it was such a great idea for you to go live with your grandpa. Yeah, don't, don't, don't buy back the sale here, bro. Oh, but I, but I completely understand your decision, and it's final, right? Yeah. Anyway. That was it. I did it. <clears throat> you did it? Yeah, it was my arm candy line that uh, turned the whole thing around. It was me driving off the cliff. Arm candy. Cliff. Arm cliff. candy. We both just got lucky there, didn't we? Yeah, we did. I'll tell you, Burke, with a guy like that as a father, it's hard to believe you're as close to normal as you are. Thank you. I believe that was close to a compliment. Close as you're going to get. <laughs> Take care, all of you. Ryder, sorry you didn't get that extra room. Do boys your age still like cash? It's timeless. 
That's how most legislation gets passed. So, uh, what about me, Grandpa? Oh, yes, I do have something for you. Beautiful and smart Lennox. The life of Madame Curie. Famous woman scientist. Not much of a looker, but very inspirational. Thanks, Grandpa. Uh, here. Use these 20s as a bookmark. And Mel, I don't have anything for you except grudging admiration. Grudging? I mean, thank you. Dear sweet Joseph, <laughs> my watch. I'm gonna miss you, buddy. Oh, here we go. Well, send us pictures of Mom's new face. I do hope I recognize her. <laughs> Let's do this again soon. Goodbye. Well, I guess there's nothing left to say except, uh, Lennox, upstairs, hit the books now. Oh, hey, Joe, you want to go shoot some hoops? Yeah, I'll meet you out there. Look, Lennox, I'm really sorry we're going to miss that Green Day concert on Monday, but I can't keep you out till midnight the night before a big test. It's fine. I understand. But if you get a B or better on the test, we will go see Green Day in Detroit on Saturday. Really? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> How'd you get those tickets? But I told you, I'm a very important person. All right, I'm a semi-important person. All right, my dad is a very important person, and he made a call for me, all right? At least he's still good for something. <laughs>